everyone. My name is Julia Friedlander. I'm the C. Boyden Gray Senior Fellow and Deputy Director of the Atlanta Council's Geoeconomics Program. It is my pleasure today to welcome Bill Morneau, former Finance Minister of Canada, to discuss the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and the, uh, in his candidacy to become its next Secretary General. Now, the OECD is not necessarily always in the headlines, but it's a very crucial uh, organization for global economic governance. So, Mr. Morneau, I'd like to just start our conversation out by asking you why, after 15 years, is this a great opportunity for new leadership to the organization, and how do you see its role going forward? Well, uh, thank you. Let me just start by thanking you, Julia, for having me this morning, and the Atlantic Council for doing this. I think it's uh, an important opportunity to highlight the OECD and the central role it can play in helping all of our countries, all of the member countries, in some of the key issues of our time. So for me, when I think about the OECD, I look at the particular moment in time we're in and realize that it is absolutely essential that as we build back, hopefully, from this very challenging moment we're in with the pandemic, that we have the, the data and the resources and the policy options to help us to, to build back better, to make sure that we use our resources in a way that can address the challenges that we faced the issues that are clear in our social security systems around the world, and ensure that we, we get ourselves to a better position as we, as we recover. And the OECD, as a, as a central place to gather data, to come up with policy options, will be critically important in that effort. So now is a, a particular moment in time, obviously on that issue, but we have other compelling issues. The issue around climate change, where the OECD has been so important in, in making sure that we have the information needed to develop the policies required to, to combat this enormous existential challenge. The issue around digitization of our economies has become even more critical in the pandemic, and the OECD has been central on issues like privacy and issues around taxation in the digital age. So I think there's a moment now where new leadership can, can take the organization to that next step, make sure that it supports member countries, but also helps the world to build back better, to deal with climate change, to enable the investments in digitization that we all need. And um, I'm looking forward, hopefully, to the opportunity to lead the institution through those really important challenges and, uh, and things that we can do together. Thank you so much for those uh, introductory thoughts. Um, my second question for you might be, you know, after serving as, as finance minister for, you know, on a, on a sovereign basis, right, representing your uh, kind of Canada's interests, how would you parlay the, those experiences and also your own, um, your own background in the private sector to, uh, to run a multilateral organization? It's a different animal, right? It's, uh, there's a lot of uh, sausage making in the process. Well, it is, it is a good question, and it, it gets at the heart of what the, the member countries are trying to do in, in figuring who would be the right leader for the institution at this moment in time and for the next five years. I think the, the experience in having been a finance minister is, is critically important. As being a finance minister during the pandemic, I led Canada's efforts on the pandemic response, the economic response. And through that, I, I realized how critically important getting access to information and coming up with policy options to support Canadians was. And obviously, at the beginning of the pandemic, none of us had a playbook. We didn't have the information we needed to come up with the answers. And it made us realize that we need to be ready for that next iteration. So as I was developing a wage subsidy in Canada, I knew that they were doing something in Australia that was similar but different, something in the UK, again, similar but different, or in Denmark. And the next iteration will be, how did those things work? How are we going to take that information to come up with the policies for sectoral decisions as we move out of the pandemic in what I hope will be the not-too-distant future? So that finance minister experience will be critically important. And also in other areas, as finance minister in Canada, I introduced a carbon price in our country. You can imagine how challenging that is in a country where almost 10% of our economy is based on the resource sector. So I, I pushed and figured out a way to put in place a carbon price, thought about how we can have a just transition for workers in the industries that were impacted, thought about ideas for innovation around carbon capture technology. So, so saw climate change policies in action. And sitting at the G7 and the G20 table, which is an important multilateral experience, led me to be deeply involved in the discussions around digital taxation, 
how we can work together among countries to come up with an appropriate approach to dealing with the opportunities, which are huge in digitization, and the challenges and how we set standards internationally. So that finance minister experience, that multilateral experience at those tables will be critically important. But also, having previously been a CEO before I got into public life, I ran, I built and ran a, a professional services firm with more than 4,000 people. So more people than is actually at the OECD and know how challenging is it is to make an institution nimble and able to react quickly. That is what the OECD needs in the next iteration. Speed will matter. We'll need to get information to people quickly. Making sure we work horizontally across the institution will be critical because different parts of the institution will need to work together to bring forth ideas on climate change, bring forth ideas on, on how to respond to the pandemic. And so being someone who actually has that deep management experience will be critically important. As I look towards the next iteration, I think that for the Secretary General, experience as a government minister and as a finance minister with the breadth that brings, experience as a, as a CEO of a, of a large organization, these are critical factors in enabling, I believe, the, the uh, OECD to be successful as it faces the challenges and opportunities that it needs to face. Thank you for that. And of course, I sympathize with a lot of that as a Treasury Department alum myself in Washington. Um, I understand that these are um, in many ways collective action issues, right, H handled in multilateral lateral fora and how effective they really, these conversations really can be for setting global standards. Um, maybe I could ask you, you know, um, well, you know, a little bit further about digital taxation um, and climate finance. And maybe um, in light of the chief economist of the OECD, Lorna Spoon, she did make a comment about fiscal stimulus. This is not a time for um, to co close our pocketbooks, so to speak. Um, how you might approach all these three issues um, that will be on the on your desk in June, if uh, if, you're, if you're to be selected. Well, those are those are the right questions. Uh, maybe I start with the last one because the the uh, Laurent Spoon. Um, discussions this past week and an article that was in the Financial Times clearly identified the view at the OECD, but also the view that's coming out of other uh, multilateral institutions that we, we do need to think about how we ensure that we have the right fiscal response to the challenge we're facing as we the pandemic. I think we're all aware of the, the challenge that uh, monetary policy faces in the current environment and the realization that if we're going to support people coming out of this, because we have very severe dislocation of people, people from, from particularly challenged walks of life in many cases, people that are not fully attached in the workforce, some of the, the least successful in our societies, obviously women and young people have impact, been impacted more. We do need to think about fiscal responses that address those challenges. And we, we cannot be, um, we cannot be sitting idly by while people face up to perhaps challenges that will not be faced in, in hopefully other, even the next generation. So, so I think that's critically important. As we do that, of course, we're going to need to think about having recommendations on what appropriate responses are. The fiscal response will be challenged in many countries because their level of debt will have gone up materially through the course of the pandemic. So, so policymakers will be forced to make difficult decisions and having the information at their fingertips and having the, uh, I guess, the recognition that they need to take those decisions will be important. The OECD needs to be stalwart in helping to ensure that that frame of reference is taken and that people understand how to make difficult choices. The choices in climate change, the, the choices in uh, digital tax will be particularly important. And I think that what is required in that regard will be in some cases, data, because that's critical and the OECD is important. But in other cases, working hard to try and uh, come up with ideas that can work for different member countries and hopefully set standards that are more global. So if I address those, uh, those two in turn, around climate, climate finance, I think we'll need at the OECD to make sure that we give people the data to understand the value and the benefits of different policy options that they can take recognizing that not all countries are in the same situation based on the sources of energy they use. Not all countries are in the same situation politically. So the, the ability for them to move forward on climate change policies 
needs to be uh, needs to be there, needs to be delivered in terms of information from the OECD on what can have the most impact. And certainly the idea that uh, finance of, of climate change opportunities coming out of this is central uh, needs to be continued to be discussed at the table, at the conference table, at the OECD and other places. Around digital tax, I see uh, how critical this is in the very near, near term. We are going to have multiple countries put in place individual digital taxation regimes if we don't come up with a global standard. And that would be quite unfortunate. The industries that are impacted would not make the right investments because they will not have a playing field that they understand. And we will have continued back and forth between countries, between, in many cases, Europe and the United States uh, with different interests at stake. So what I would want to do is continue on the path of the OECD, but uh, work diligently to look at the member interests as well as the broader interests to come to a solution quickly. And that includes looking at the interests of the industry because we know that there will be support among industry players because they do want to understand their investment opportunities. So having sat at the G7 table on these discussions, I think gives me a window into where the next steps are. But the broader G20 table also gives a window because the interests of some of the some of the smaller nations that are not necessarily directly um, antagonist discussion need to be considered. There's two aspects of the digital tax discussion right now. The aspect around minimum taxation, which impacts a countries more broadly, and the, the idea around particular taxation of digital-based com companies. One of those will be uh, requiring a smaller group of, of countries and um, and the industry, and the second one, a broader group of countries that that will need to think about how it impacts on their on their taxation systems in their countries. So I would want to get at this quickly. I would want to use that experience of knowing the the different views of those different countries, and I would want to uh, make sure that we we get something out there quickly enough so that we don't have multiple countries coming up with individual actions that will actually reduce our ability to be collectively successful. I think the OECD as a standard setter can be particularly important in this regard. Thank you so much. And Mr. Murdo, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. I, I wish you the best of luck in your candidacy to become Secretary General of the OECD, but really also today for helping explain the importance of the organization to our viewership. Um, these things are important um, and we have uh, a lot of challenges ahead of us. Thanks a lot, have a good day. Well, thank you, wish you and everybody watching this, hopefully uh, good health getting through what is a particularly challenging time for all of us and our families, our loved ones. So best wishes for 2021.